Hi, welcome back to Strategic Planet. Today I'd like to give you an insight into Social Bearing, which is a Twitter analytics platform which is free. Um, this is the home page that you'll find when you've signed in. You can find it by just looking for uh, Social Bearing on uh, Google or typing in Social Bearing or one word dot com in the URL. Now the first thing that I recommend you do is sign in with your own Twitter account because it will give you uh, a little more flexibility when you are doing your searches. You can get away without having to sign in but um, you do lose out on uh, a, fl uh, a few features. Uh, so you simply uh, click on the link at the top and it will ask um, uh, for authorization. Now, uh, you can see that uh, I'm, I'm now signed in uh, and I can sign out as soon as I finish. You've got uh, a number of options uh, available. I'm going to start on the right hand side. So the first thing uh, you can do is actually search for uh, the friends of a particular handle. Now I'll, I'll use my own um, uh, handle which is Strategic uh, Planet. And what uh, you will see is um, all uh, my friends uh, that, um, that that I have and um, what you'll also see is a whole load of uh, information about uh, that particular handle. There is um, one um, uh, element here, TUQI rating, which is a, a quality rating um, developed by Social Bearing. Um, uh, if you go on their blog it'll explain a little bit more uh, about it. Um, you can go back to the search facilities by going to the top right hand corner and, and uh, clicking on search again. Followers uh, is um, uh, the same so you can look at who's following uh, a particular uh, handle and here you can see all my followers uh, at this moment in time. Uh, again the same sort of data. Uh, interestingly also on the left hand side there are some uh, filter uh, opportunities so you can uh, filter out a uh, particular area. So let's say I, I choose uh, those from uh, New York and the US. So it's given me the the six uh, um, followers that I've got from that location. Now uh, I'll go back to the search facilities. You've got people. People is uh, interesting, particularly if you're starting out, because uh, what you can do is um, type in the, uh, the, the the area that you're interested in. So let's say I want to type in uh, digital marketing. I can find uh, all those um, users who are uh, tweeting uh, about uh, digital marketing. Uh, and that might be um, a way for you to identify who who to follow in the future. I'll go back to uh, the search facilities. So we've, we've done one, two, three. Now we've got geo, which is a location. Um, you could type for a specific term in, in that location or GS. Um, uh, look for uh, the, the tweets that have taken place. Now, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. This is not uh, perfect, but uh, let's say I were to look at London. Uh, I had um, a radius of two kilometers and it's showing me 67 tweets that uh, have taken place in the last 42 minutes uh, in, in that location. You can see where they've um, uh, taken place and the tweets and you can load um, uh, more tweets. Now what one of the, the downsides, or I suppose it, it's um, uh, um, a plus and a minus, is that um, uh, it only loads up a certain number of tweets and you have to keep loading uh, to get the the, uh, the next set uh, of data. So uh, you, you'll notice there that uh, it's two kilometers. You can make it bigger or smaller. So if we go back to that um, uh, geo facility here, uh, you see here that uh, the search radius is two kilometers, uh, or I can change it to, to make even, even more. So you can go up a maximum of 2,000 uh, kilometers. Uh, the, the problem with this is that um, not everyone um, puts in a location when, when they're setting up their Twitter account. So some people might say uh, their location is in bed or uh, in Middle Earth or something like that. And then that won't pick it up even if the tweet has actually taken place 
um, in London or uh, where, you, where you think it's going to be. So do bear that in mind. Now, uh, you've got a handle as well, so you can search for um, what um, a particular handle is tweeted all about. I'm not going to go through this because um, it's very similar to what I've done. But the one that I think is probably the most important is the search for the key term or the, the, the tweet. So uh, let's say uh, I type in digital marketing. There is a, an advanced facility, which uh, I sometimes use. Um, you've got uh, date options, but bear in mind that you you can only go back eight days. Uh, you can see here, that is the limit of uh, where you can go. But you could um, uh, do a range if you're trying to um, analyze a specific uh, piece of data. Now, what you'll see that, that again, the limitations of um, social bearings that will only throw up up to the first hundred and then you have to keep loading uh, and what will happen as well is that um, if you're going to download the data which is something I would recommend you do if you're going to do some detailed analysis uh, is that you can only download um, 5,000 lines of information now, if, if that was the case, what I do is um, I find um, certain people who are tweeting a lot uh, about that particular subject uh, and uh, exclude them. So I can exclude um, uh, sort of uh, key players at that moment in time, but then go back uh, and just include them and, and pick up what they've, they've tweeted on, on the subject. So uh, it's an iterative process. So I download the first 5,000, uh, bring up this handle, what they've said, bring up that handle, what they've said, then I can get more than 5,000 lines of, of data. What I also re recommend you do is um, pick out the language that you want to use. So in this case, it, it's English. That, that way you're, you're filtering it down uh, even more. I don't tend to use the, the ID. Uh, I'd leave uh, the type to recent. Um, and again, you can pick out photos, links, videos, uh, verified users. Um, etc. Now you can you can use the exact word or the exact match, but I often don't take that because um, uh, let's say I had the word uh, don't in there. Um, if you had the exact match, then if you had an apostrophe um, between the N and the T, it would look for that. But if I uh, hadn't ticked the exact match, it would bring up both uh, D O N T's and D O N apostrophe T's. So I um, tend to leave it um, without the exact match. Now um, let's let's do the search and show you what uh, what comes up. So here's what um, what appears.